Hey there, I'm James Limerick Kerr, and today we're going to be talking about uh, metronome practice for improving your internal pulse. So improving the, the feel of your playing, the ti your timing uh, through different metronome uh, practice exercises. Um, and uh, we're going to be taking a look at an example of a jazz tune to apply this to, uh, the metronome practice. And then uh, we'll take it over to a bluegrass example of a song um, and apply the same concept to that style. Um, so I'm a big believer in practicing with the metronome and your foot tapping. And we'll talk about a couple different ways you can easily apply that to your uh, practice routines and really work towards improving your, your timing and your internal pulse, your swing, your groove. Um, which are all just critical aspects of our, uh, maybe the most important aspects of our playing. So if you want to um, expand upon these topics, then uh, take a look at the textbook and you can find the link in the description below. Um, so first off, um, we'll take a look at an example of just the, the standard uh, chord changes to I Got Rhythm. Um, the jazz standard I Got Rhythm by George Gershwin. I'll just play through some of the chord changes. And the first thing we're going to talk about is set the metronome. I've got it on 80 beats per minute here. And we're going to consider that beats one and three. So the first thing we'll talk about is practicing with the click on beats one and three of each measure. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm tapping my foot as well, along with the chord notes on one and three, or as along with the click on one and three, rather. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So in any kind of medium to up-tempo tunes, rather than trying to tap your foot and, and set the click on every quarter note, start with it on one and three. Um, so let's hear a little bit of the, what that would sound like on the, the chord changes to this tune. One, two, one, two, three, four. So that was one and three. All right, so could you feel that? So I've got the click going on one and three. So uh, it's like playing with the bass player, if the bass player is playing with a two feel. It's also where the cha chord changes go by, is on beats one and three of each measure, two beats um, each, so it's very useful for that. It's useful for keeping your uh, place in the form as well, if you're tapping your foot and really feeling the one and three like that. Um, that's where the chord changes move. So I would suggest playing jazz in the, um, with your foot always tapping on one and three. That's how I was taught. Um, and I'm a big believer in that to improve the feel of your playing. And then once that's comfortable, if you can do it on one and three, then we're gonna switch it over to two and four now. So now it's like um, you wanna intentionally switch the click to two and four. What you don't wanna do is accidentally turn it over and have it be, um, you know, one and three or two and four mixed up. Um, so you intentionally switch it and think, okay, now I'm putting it on two and four. Um, so we could hear that. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs>
So that was two and four. You feel that? So that would be on the jazz uh, drum set. That's where typically the hi hat is on two and four. So it's in a different place. Um, two and four is usually on a snare drum in rock and um, a backbeat, kind of a feel. Mm -hmm. and that's two and four on the snare. In jazz, typically it's on the hi-hat. And then the snare is doing more um, um, syncopation, accents on the upbeats and a swing feel. So that's very powerful to switch it intentionally like that. I was just playing the, the chord chain, improvising some comping over that. Um, so you could just play play chords until you're really comfortable. Whatever tune you're working on, um, set it first at, on one and three, and see if you can you know create a nice swing feel like that. And then stop it, and then intentionally switch it to two and the four. You're going to keep your foot on one and three when the click is on two and four. Um, so just getting into it is the hard part, right? Um, a lot of times just starting out in two and four if you're not used to it. Two, a one, two, three, four. And that's usually how count off jazz tunes. A lot of times people snap on two and four and they count one, two, one, two, a one, two, three, four. So getting into it will take some getting used to. It. You could start by just going two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Until you can kind of get into the the feel of doing it naturally. That might be the hardest part for you at first is just switching it um, intentionally and then not turning it over accidentally. That's what you want to work to. So if you feel like you've derailed it for this exercise, you probably stop, reset um and have an ear to the click at all times don't be focused you know on what you're doing and kind of start ignoring the click or worrying about the chords you're playing and then you're going to turn it over right so the idea is to create a natural swinging feel putting the click on two and four just gives the gives it a little bit of a groove it allows you know the stiffness of a metronome to actually create a little bit of a swing groove for you somehow when you put it on two and the four you can also apply it to funk backbeats and whatever style of music you're playing um, so we'll do a, an example in a, a bluegrass um, style and just go through the same thing say we're playing a bluegrass chord progression in G um, start with it on one and three I'm tapping my foot with the click progression um, a lot of times in bluegrass they count it as if you're in two right so they actually you know call it two feel so in that case it would be two one and two and one and two and or if you're counting in a four four one two three four one two three four one two three four so the instrument in bluegrass that would be on the one and three is the bass right so you'd be going boom 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 So when you're doing this, kind of imagine that you're playing with the bass player. The, the metronome is your bass player. Tapping your foot, just creating a nice groove. Right with the click the whole time. start you can start just clapping on two and four one just get a feel for that so much of american music you know that's the feel we're going for that backbeat clap on the two and the four one two three four one tapping your foot on one and the three clapping your hands on two and four one um and then if you're switching it over in bluegrass to now two and four or if it's the ands, if you're counting it in two, one and two and one. Now you're gonna put the metronome, um, 
so in the bluegrass group, usually that's the mandolin that chops. We call that on the on the on the two and four or on the ands. So two chop 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 boom 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 one two three four. <laughs> Tap of my foot with the mesh with the one and three. So it's like playing with the mandolin player now. And don't turn it over, right? That's the worst thing you can do. So you don't want to accidentally, you might find at first when you're doing this. Uh, find it very difficult. So don't get frustrated if that's the case. Think you're on to something. This is something you need to work on. Um, so stick with it until it becomes natural. Um, so you'll, you'll feel it pulling back you back to one and three, almost like a, a magnet, and you'll, you'll find yourself turning it back over. Uh, mandolin players do the opposite, funny enough, and they'll, they'll find the one and three pulling them to two and four, and they'll start, you know, they want it to be on their chop. Um, so that's what you want to be conscious of. Don't turn it over accidentally. Make a conscious switch. Okay, now I'm playing with the mandolin player. One, two, one, two, three, four. Just playing chords until you get it. Seems simple, but you'd be surprised. Uh, it's it's really hard for a lot of people to do this, and they um, you know get frustrated. If this is also 80 beats per minute, so if you can't do it here, you know do it much slower. Take it down to like 50, um, and just do the same thing. Work your way up. So this is one and three at 50. One and two, three, four. Should be kind of like a country song. Don't speed it up. Locked in. This is one and three, so you're right with the bass player. Tapping your foot right with the click. And then if we did two and the four at this tempo, this is 50 beats per minute. So that was two and four without flipping it back to one and three. So I kind of think of that as a bluegrass uh, aptitude test or IQ test or something where um, if you get that down, you're going to be totally fine and you'll, your timing and your playing will be will just rise from there. If you never get that down, you're not able to play solid rhythm with the, the click in, in those uh, different two different places. You'll, it's like do not pass go. You know, I've heard people can play for 40 years and still not play with good timing if they never get this down. So timing is the most important aspect of bluegrass. It's often overlooked because um, the chords are simple, but the timing is not simple to do it well. So um, this is what you need to work on um, if you're playing bluegrass. So you can apply it to a jazz context like we did here or a bluegrass. You can also, like I said, do it to a a funk groove that you're working on, a rock backbeat, do the same thing. Try putting it on one and three to start with. Um, and then once you get the basic chords down, like what we were doing today, just playing the chord changes, um, then play your melodies. Apply the same concept to practicing the melodies you're working on to the tunes, and then improvising or sol playing your breaks, playing your solos um, with the click in those two different ways. And just avoid turning it over um, keeping a conscious ear, you're also developing your ability to listen. If you can really lock in a groove with the metronome, then you can lock in a groove with another human being. If you're getting off and you can't lock in a beat with a click, then you're not going to be able to lock in, be able to lock in a beat with another live human being. And then we want to take this and apply it to playing with other 
human beings in a live, you know, fun music making context. But if you practice this way, your timing will improve considerably. All right, so best of luck with that. Just be patient, take it slow, slow the click down and look for gradual progress. It may take you weeks, months to, to get the feel for this, or it may come naturally if, you're, if you've already been playing for a while. Um, but um, hang in there and keep working at it. It will improve over time and it'll make a huge difference in your, in your playing, in the feel of your playing. All right, so if you got something out of this, um, do subscribe. There's going to be lots more uh, videos related to music theory and um, all aspects of guitar. Um, and then we go into much greater detail in my textbook. Um, so check that out. The, the link is in the description. A 21st century guidebook for guitarists, practice, performance, and teaching. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.